In the middle of your night, there's a Christian nightlight beaming the good news from 1,149 feet in the air, piercing the darkness with a bright ray of hope. From the tallest freestanding observation tower in the United States, breaking the bondage of temptation by booming down into Sin City's late night Las Vegas strip. Broadcasting live, coast to coast, and streaming around the world on the internet. He's prayed with thousands, and now he's ready to pray with you, the dynamic prayer of faith on the all-new Pray America Live. Here, Midnight's Radio Pastor, David Wood. Everybody, this is Evangelist David Woods. We made it. I'm without music. I'm without phones. I'm without my cell phone. I ran in here to get before you, and I made it. Oh, glory to God. I got my coffee. I got my sodi pop, as you say in Illinois, in Indiana, sodi pop. And I'm here. So I have to get a, a few little things. You know, this system, it starts whether you're ready or not. (laughs) That's the way it's going to be at the coming of the Lord, you know. Whether you're ready or not, he's coming. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you're with me tonight. And let me take a moment to get my new music out here. And I want to hear from you tonight. Here's what's happening. We were all, today's been a busy day. Wow. For the Lord, working for the Lord. We called technical support. We called the phone company. We've been on the phone with so many people. I've been cracking the whip around here. We've got helpers working around the house, rearranging things, doing things. I would like to come this summer and um, come to you from my living room. And uh, I think we're going to make that happen. But a lot, lots being hung, a lot's being changed, lots being painted and moved and furniture. And so Angela's out there you know, cracking the whip with our helpers and our church people. And they're just, they're just jewels. They're just awesome. And uh, I've been all day today on the phone, cracking the whip and getting things happen. So here's the story. Our piece of equipment, it's called a stack unit. And every FM radio or AM radio would love to have this stack unit. I think it's about $6,000 what we paid for it. It's paid in full and it's been it's been a blessing to us for nine years. So I was on with technical support. I don't know the difference between diodes and, and what else did he say? Bridges and I don't know. I don't even know. Look at, here's the battery. It's thin like a nickel. What is it called? 2032. So we replaced the battery. Then I had to move the diode and move it over. And then I had to short the system to dead set it. Oh, well, that was better than sending it in, you know, and I don't know how to do all that. And I just kept saying, uh, am I going to get shocked? Am I going to get electrocuted? Boy, some people are geniuses, you know, when it comes to, when it comes to electronics and stuff, I don't consider myself a genius in, in electronics at all, but he is. And as long as I had him walking me through the process with tweezers and moving little tiny computer circuit board. That's what I was doing. Circuit board stuff over. Come to find out it's a bad power, uh, something on the inside with to do with power. Anyways, long and short of it is I got a service order and it's got to go all the way back to Massachusetts. So I filled out the paperwork and I don't even know what the cost is going to be, but it's got to be fixed. It's got to be fixed, and I, I wish they could have given me a, an estimate, but they didn't, and they're the only ones that can fix it because they manufacture it, you know? <sighs> so anyways, that's where I, that's what I've been doing all day today. So hurry, 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 move, 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 get it done. Come on, let's go, let's go. And so I finally come in here, and then the computer, last minute, goes down on me. You don't want to know my world. 
So, but that's where I am. And so let's get things fired up here because some of you have been waiting all day. And I've been waiting all day. Frankly, I've been wanting to have church with you. I've been wanting to be shouting with you is what I've been wanting to do. Early this morning, my day started early. And I don't do anything without praying first. And um, that means I pray over you and your situation. Let me grab my names. Don't go anywhere. I'm right back. All right. This is what I've been calling out before the Lord. Been weeping and crying and praying and touching heaven for you. Do you cry when you pray? No more. You don't do that anymore. I do. I do. When I start feeling the presence of the Lord, I start bawling and crying and boohooing and and shouting and giving God the praise. Just went right on down this list. I don't have my iPhone. I've, I've called out to my kids to bring it to me. Still don't have it. So as soon as they bring it to me, I'll know who's watching with me tonight. I'm assuming you're with me. It's amazing these computers have a memory to pick right back up where you left off. I'm going to teach you tonight on how to take the head of the giant off. Some of you are in real battles. I mean, you're in a battle for your life, in a battle for your finances, in a battle for your job. You're, you're contending with those that contend with your children. And, and I'm going to stand with you. Let me just look here at what people have given today. Thank you, Eliana from Minnesota. On an earlier broadcast, thank you for being a blessing. Yes, 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 yes. Pete, thank you for responding last night. Ron and Tammy, both of you responded. That's it. Those four people have responded to the call of God and helping us financially. And and I know several of you did through the mail and several of you did last week. And we give God the praise for that but I'm needing several of you to go to monthlypartners.com and help me with this, okay? I'm a, I'm guessing it's a $6,000 unit. I'm guessing it's probably gonna be a $500 problem. That's just my guess. I mean, it could be a hundred. I mean, postage alone is gonna be, it's a mainframe, y'all. It's not just a phone. It's the phone, the mainframe. It's heavier than your, than your desktop at home. So let's pray. Let's pray that the Lord will give me $500 tonight to fix this. Can we pray? Father, we come in agreement right off the top of this program. Today's been a busy day and I love you. I've, I've loved the rain, whether it's coming down hard or whether it's sprinkling, I've enjoyed it. I've been thanking you for the rain. I've loved the sunshine, the little breaks we get. Thank you for the sunshine. I love you, Lord. I'm at peace with you in every area of my life. And I give you praise. Today, Father, today, before 9 o'clock, I declare a $500 breakthrough that will meet the, the nightly budget of our ministry, plus we'll take care of this mainframe to get repaired. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you for partners. Thank you for helpers. Somebody said it's so expensive. Yes, the ministry is expensive. And if you're just faithful to the Lord, the Lord will bring you partners and workers and helpers. He will. He'll always send people along. We serve a mighty God. Thank you, Tia, for being a blessing. Thank you for Stacy. Stacy from Kentucky. Stacy from Texas. Internet slowing down on me, stopping my music. Philip, I love you and I appreciate you. I've prayed you through to victory. I hope you're listening tonight in Georgia. I'll pray you through to victory again, brother. And Chrissy, prayed for you today. Ron and Tammy, Tia, Peter, Rita, Tommy, 
from Arizona, Tommy from Iowa. This is getting in dangerous, Terry call, calling names. Elisa, Ian Becky, Maryland. Got three Marylands. Karen from uh, Portland and Karen from Federal Way, Washington. Kathy and Sue. Sue, I prayed for you two days now. Chandra, Jim and Joanne, of course, always. Israel, Jeff from Idaho, Fawn and Daniel. Praise God for both of you. And I got your message. I just haven't responded yet. Got it, in, got it on the fly. TJ, we're praying for TJ today. Her son is infected with COVID in Arizona, and he, he needs a miracle. We're praying. She didn't have a place to stay, and I, I texted her the name of a church friend that I know in Tucson to see if she could sleep on the back pew or give her the money to stay in a hotel. Matt and Sheila. I haven't heard from Matt and Sheila for a while. Jackie. Jackie, oh, Jackie. You and your husband, Rick, are just choice servants. Liana. Thank you, Liana, for responding. Gretchen. Haven't heard from Gretchen in a while. Marilyn. Thank you, little Marilyn from Arizona. Praise the Lord for the wonderful, our beautiful church in Kentucky. Mike and D. Thank you. God bless you. Oh, my goodness. Alyssa and Matt from Henderson. I don't want to call names twice, but thank you, Robbie. Thank you, Neil and Diane from Salem. Thank you, Pastor Al. Oh, thank you, Lord. Sister Terry, thank you. What a blessing you are. Wow. And, um, I just kept praying that the Lord would lift you into a higher level, a higher realm. Oh, there's more on this list. I just can't go through them all and announce everybody. Don't feel bad if I left you out. It wasn't intentional. Okay. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So many precious saints. There's some people on here I haven't heard from in a while, and I need to hear from you. I need to hear from you. Thank God for Josh. Two Joshes out in my living room, foyer of my house, working, helping. This is it. Can you stretch your hands out? This is the authorized return service order form. And this is a request for a loaner that they will maybe lend, lend me one. I need a miracle, folks. Come on. We need our phones back up and working. As soon as the phone company came out and gave us two lines, then this went dead. So then we have our phone company coming out because they gave us two lines, but one line isn't coming in. So now they got to come back Monday. I'm telling you, I'm keep fighting and fighting and pushing and pushing. And those of you who are strong in the Lord, you know why. Doris, I love you too. Doris is not on that list. Put Doris on that list. I don't know why she's not on that list. Father, I come to you humbly before you, boldly before the throne of grace. And I thank you, Father. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, we condemn it and show it to be in the wrong. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and our righteousness is of you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right. Experiencing interruptions. That's what the cable company says. Well, let's forget about it all. Let's get right to the word of God. Shall we? I mean, I love to sing and shout and we need to every day. That's what I do. That's what you do. I hope you do. But if you can't do it, you just got to keep on moving. Keep on moving. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
I'm assuming I'm with you tonight. I have no way to tell. Hold on. Let me hold your ears. Just hold your ears. Hold on. Let me get my things. Hold your ears. How many hats do you wear? I'm a father one minute. I'm a minister the other minute. I'm a husband another minute. (laughs) And I keep the joy. I keep the joy. That's the key. Don't get stressed out, okay? It's so easy to get stressed out. Believe me, I have opportunities about every five minutes to get stressed out, but I refuse to get stressed out because I'm taking the head off the giant, not the head off my daughter. Right? I'm taking the head off the giant, not the head of my wife. (laughs) Now, I'm serious. It sounds funny, but I'm serious. And you got to realize that. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. And you got to realize that your enemy is not people. Your enemy is the enemy. He's He's constantly warring against the call of God on your life. Anybody still with me? Oh, yeah, you're still with me. I got audio. Let's see who's with me tonight. Oh, some of you sharing. You know what? It blesses me when you share this video. Also, I want to say this. There are, there are two people that I know of that are watching this on YouTube, and they gather around the whole family room, And it hit me today when they told me that. I said, we need to have an evangelistic, I don't know what we call it. We need to have a certain day where everybody invites two or three people over to watch. Or you could send them a link and say, here, watch this. And we could really build our audience this way. And uh, I, I just, I just, that come on me. I thought, wow, we need to do that. So... Yes, we've resolved it. Look at you all praying. All right. Kind of, in a way, it's kind of good because I know who's with me and who's just peekabooing. A lot of peekabooers. A lot of peekabooers. You know who the peekabooers are, don't you? They just come in the room to peekaboo to see what you're doing or see what you're going to say next, right? To see what you're going to say next. They don't really care about what you're doing or where you're going or what you're saying or how you're praying. They don't care. They just want to talk about you. They just (laughs) The outpouring that we've been looking for and hearing the Lord prophesy for about, for about years has really started. You don't see it. You don't really think about it, but it's really happening. You say, well, how come COVID and all this and church shutting and all these people dying? I'm telling you, we're, we're right on the threshold. Of something very powerful fixing to happen. And um, it makes me shout and happy when I think about the goodness of God and what he's doing. What he's doing in my life, what he's doing in your life. It's a time to receive from God. It's a time to, to gather up all the loose ends in our lives and, and start releasing our faith. I want to say this to you because some, Cassandra, I'm so happy to see you tonight. 
Oh, I've been wondering about you. Cassandra, I pray for you a lot. I've been praying for you. I've been praying for your home situation, your business situation. And I feel connected to your family. Okay. I just wanted to get that out there to you, Cassandra. Thank you for being with me tonight. It's not about how much faith you've learned to get or receive or, or how much faith you have. It's about how much faith you've learned to release and you can't release what you don't have. So just because you get faith, it means you're halfway there. You're not all the way there yet. When you get the faith of the Lord and you get it in your eyes and your ears, the word of God in your eyes and in your ears, it goes down in your heart. Now faith is building and growing and you're able to release faith. And that's when miracles start happening. But if you're not in the word, you won't know how to release faith. So it's not about how much faith you have. It's about how much you've learned to release, especially in the areas where results have been seemingly slow and coming in your life. Is there an area of your life where you seem like that there's, that there's a slowness where you're not really receiving like you want to? Can you think of some place like that? I see people that are quick to receive money, but yet they're slow to receive healing. Or some people just the opposite. They're quick to receive healing, and yet they're, they're slow to receive money. And uh, if it's like that, you do a personal inventory on your life, and you go back and you say, okay, now, if I'm slow to receive healing, then, then I must be missing healing scriptures. I must not be pouring healing. There's something I'm doing wrong to slow the harvest down, and I've got to put healing scriptures in me more. Or if you're quick to be healed, and yet money is just not coming, it could be that you got to go back and build your faith in the area of godly finances and good stewardship. And so when the harvest is slowed in your life, that can be a clue. That can be a signal to you that that's the area where you need to feed your faith and starve your doubts. Are you hearing me? I'm talking about those aches and pains and the different harassments that hung around your life too long. It's time to get really violent in prayer, not in physical violence, spiritual violence, where you pull down the strongholds. It's a time to listen more carefully to the Holy Spirit for direction and revelation. I see people, they come, they watch me 10 minutes and then they're gone. I think, I think I ask them, are you watching our program? Well, you know, I get busy and I get distracted. And, and then I tell them, this is why you're not receiving from God. There are those on with me tonight and every night, and they're watching me as, as long as the program, not about watching me, but they're listening to everything that I'm saying to them and they're building faith and they're getting encouraged and they're releasing faith and they're getting their miracle and the harvest is not slowed down. So if the harvest is slowed in some area of your life, you gotta go back and say, take a look, do a self-examination, find out what area in my life do I need to beef up on? What area in my life do I need to pour on the power and excel, and put the pressure on the word of God? Listen, if the pressure is big on you, you're not putting the pressure back on the word. There are times where I get so, like today, today is a perfect example. You watched it, you just witnessed it, okay? You just witnessed what happened. The mainframe processor is not working. The diode, the solenoid, the whatever node is gone off. And so now they got, it's got to go all the way to Massachusetts. That's postage. That's UPS, FedEx, whatever it is that we decide to use all the way out there for probably a week, two weeks. And I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to replace it. Lord, I'd love to have a new one. It's $6,000, but I'd love to have a new one. And, and so that starts beginning to mount on me as pressure. And, um, so rather than take the pressure of that thing, it's not mine to take. That's the Lord's equipment. That down there in Arizona that I've got stored down in Arizona, that's the Lord's tent. These are the Lord's lights. Everything is the Lord's right down to my britches. Everything that I have, everything that I am and do belongs to the Lord. It came from the Lord. It's his. So therefore, 
if something breaks, if something, and, and you're, you're the same way, your refrigerator, your washer, your dryer, your, your car, your garage door, your health, whatever it is, is breaking on you. And life is full of things that break. You're going to have to get used to that. Everything in life breaks down. And when you buy something, when you, when you do something and you acquire something, keep it in mind, everything on earth breaks. There's always this thing called gravity and it's constantly pulling on everything. So with that thought in mind today, I knew what to do already. I don't get on here. I'm not getting on here crying and booting. No, no, no. I'm much more mature than that. Blubbering and crying and telling you about my need. I mean, I don't mind telling you about the need, but I don't go to you as the ultimate source. We, you and I agreed in prayer, went to the father in the name of Jesus. And we agreed and we said, thank you, Jesus, for that $500 seed. It's coming and we're going to just ship it off and it's going to go. And now I'm not even worrying about it. I'm going on. I'm going to teach the word of God and it's going to get done because it's the Lord equipment. That's the way we got to operate. But you can't operate like that. You can't put the pressure on the word if you're not putting the word in you. All right. And so it's very critical that you put the word in you so that you can put, so that it's there to put the pressure on. I guess that's the best way to say it. It's also a time to listen more carefully to the Holy Spirit for direction or revelation. Some of the craziest things happen with Joanne. I don't know. Joanne, are you watching tonight? Yes, she is. Plug your ears, sister Joanne. (laughs) I could be sitting there thinking about something in the spirit. And then she texts me something very similar. I'm like, what in the world? What? Where I can be talking about a conversation and she out of the blue. I wish I had the example. It doesn't matter. This is when we're operating in the Holy Spirit for direction, for revelation. I said, God, plug your ears, Joanne. Give me five more people that like Jim and Joanne that can hear in the spirit, see in the spirit, flow in the spirit, operate in the spirit, move in the spirit, stay in step with the prophet of God. I'm telling you, we will win the world if we get really fine tuned and good. Well, a lot of this doesn't come overnight. A lot of this takes time. It takes patience. It takes endurance. It takes trial and error. It takes learning. And that really means spending extra time in the word and prayer, and especially taking a few more minutes of quiet time each day to listen. When I get out of bed in the morning, I don't just jump out. Okay. I don't just jump out and throw on clothes and run down to the curb and say, hello world. Here I am. No, 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 no. (laughs) I slip on my knees. I get down low. If you want to go high, you got to go low. If you want to go high, you got to go low. Keep that in a strong spot in your heart. Write it down. It's a key in life. Nothing ever comes high until you go low. Resurrection never took place till he died first. And so I slip down on my knees every morning and I have a heart to heart, passionate talk with Jesus, with the Holy Spirit. I don't have to come to my secret place to do it. I can do it. Any, I can go to him anywhere I want to, but right there, first thing in the morning, I didn't have to wake up. I could have gone on in my sleep, but the Lord has a job for me. So if my job is for the Lord, then he's the first person that I consult in the morning. I say it often, and you've heard me say it. First thing every morning, I have a preacher friend who says it, and I liked it so much, I started saying it. And I started living by it. First thing every morning, last thing every night, every single day, that's the way I got to live my life. Now, somebody said, ah, but yeah, you're a preacher. Listen. You may sell insurance, you may sell cars, you might be in politics, you might be in a pastor, you, a student, whatever, you might be retired. Whatever capacity you're walking in in life, you can do the same thing. In fact, huh, if you sell a car, you need to be consulting with the Lord. He can tell you who to sell to. He can tell what kind of rascal you need to stay away from. 
if you're a student, he'll tell you which classes to go to and, and who did what professor to go talk to. And it, the Holy Spirit will give you secret information, inside information. He loves you that much, but you got to be listening every morning. Take time in the word, take time in prayer, especially take it a few more minutes of quiet time each and every day to listen. Just say, Lord, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you, Lord. Another very important thing to remember during times of revival and outpouring, like what we're going through right now, is to keep yourself ready to be called on by the Lord to minister to others. This is very important. And I suppose a handful of you understand what I'm saying, but I want all of y'all to get this tonight. Keep yourself ready. Don't say, well, I'll be ready on Sunday. No, 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 no. I said it last night. And I suppose it might've made somebody upset. I didn't mean to get them upset, but I'm just telling the truth. And if the shoe fits, you know, if you have to prepare a sermon on Saturday for Sunday, you're not in the word and you're fuel levels low spiritually. You should, you should have, the people should just press, press your button and a sermon should come forth by the Holy Ghost because you're in the word daily. That's the benefit I saw in my life. Daily bread sharpened me. Pushing through the word every day. Lord, what are you going to talk to me today? There's a level of expectation in my spirit when I approach the Lord like that every morning. Okay, God. What do you got for me today? Okay, Lord, what's your download now? Okay, Father, what would you like to show me? How I'm teachable, I'm flexible, I'm pliable. I, I want to learn. Come on, download to my system of operation. And he will if you start praying like that. And then what it does is it starts stretching you. And then... Uh, when somebody comes up six months, eight months, two weeks later, they'll start asking, you know, I was in prayer and I was thinking about that. And I just don't understand why. And you'll have the answer. Why? Because you spent daily time with the Lord, not weekly, daily. That's why these programs are important daily. And so it's a very important thing to remember during times of revival and outpouring to keep yourself ready to be called on by the Lord to minister to others. Let's just praise them tonight. Oh, we worship you. I feel that anointing. I just, I just want to stand in the place of the anointing right now. Oh, Jesus. Help the hurting one tonight. daily time with the Lord. Now, let me stop with the teaching of the word for just a moment. And let me just say, normal people go to commercial breaks. I don't do that. I want to say that we prayed earlier about our Comrex unit. That's our phone system. It's a $6,000 system. I know radio stations would love just drool over what we have, but it doesn't work. It, it blew something to do with the power. And we went through, a technician went through with me for about an hour and a half, two hours today on the phone. And we did everything, tested it. And it's got to go in. It's got to go in. It's got to ship UPS or FedEx. And it's very heavy. So I don't know. It's probably going to cost 100 Then I'm guessing that about $500 is going to fix the whole thing. And I need at least five of you to help me with this. I, I rarely come to you with a need. I often come to you, tell you about a seed that you sow, but this is a need in this ministry that I don't mind telling you. Nobody minds meeting the need, just not all the time, you know? And so this is a need tonight, and I want to bring this to you. And Father, we thank you that while I'm teaching the word here on how to take the head off the Goliath, the Lord, you'll speak to five of my partners tonight that will be obedient to go to monthlypartners.com and sow that $100 seed. I'm not even going to look till the end of the program. I'll mention it a few times, but I thank you, Father, that you're moving upon the hearts of people that are coming in out of this room tonight that will stand with this ministry, with this radio, with this television ministry, that will be a 
You're blessed to be a blessing. That's what I hear the Lord say. You're not blessed to be blessed. You're blessed to be a blessing. And so if you can do the whole $500, do it, do it. But this is going to get, we're going to shout tonight. We're going to shout. We're going to give God the praise. In fact, I don't wait to see it. I shout now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that our phone system, our Comrex unit is fixed beautifully in Jesus' name. We may even get a new one. Thank you for it, Lord. I receive it in Jesus' name. Can you say you receive it? Somebody said, well, how can I receive it? You're my partner. If you're my partner, you, you, you jump in there with me. We receive it done in Jesus' name. Oh, yes, Lord. You're still my father in little or much. I need your touch. You're still Lord. You know what? I want to play that again. I bless you right now. I worship you, Lord. I praise you that it's done. You're still Lord. You're still my father in little or much lord i need your touch you're still lord can you worship the lord you're still lord You're still my father. Yes, you are, Lord, in little or much. I need your touch. You're still my Lord. You're still Lord. You're still my father. Lord, in little or much, regardless, I need your touch. I need your touch today. I pray you touch my brother, you touch my sister right now in the name of Jesus. I pray healing over your body. I pray healing. I command sickness to go from you. Infirmity has to dry up and leave you. The healing power of God flows right now over you. In little or much, I still need your touch, Lord. The gospel doesn't make you cry. There's no power to that gospel. Now, that's what I believe. That's what I've seen in my own life. If the gospel doesn't leave you in tears or laughing or shouting or moving your emotions, you need the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation. When you get a deliverance in your life, and something happens, you'll cry, you'll shout, you'll laugh. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. I put the pressure on the word tonight. Thank you, Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. I don't want to get in a hurry. You know what I'm saying?
Father, we lift up Mark to you right now. We take authority over everything that keeps him from breathing. Loose his airwaves right now in Jesus' name. You foul devil, you loose him right now. You come off of Brother Mark. This man in Lexington, Kentucky. Touch him right now. Touch him right now in the name of Jesus. The blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus over Brother Mark. All the way in Lexington, Kentucky, Lord. Touch him. Yes, Jackie. I feel the presence. I, I want to teach the word, but I I don't ever want to get quick. Gary, Gary, I prayed for you two days ago. The Lord is saying something's about to shift on your job situation, Gary, in Seattle. Your job situation about to shift in your favor. Don't be scared at the news. Something beautiful is going to take place for you. And the Lord had me to start praying for you, Gary. You're my partner. You sow into this ministry and I appreciate you. Yolanda, Yolanda, there's two, there's two Yolandas, Yvonne in Houston, I prayed for you yesterday. Oh yes, Father. Are you feeling the anointing right now? Are you feeling the spirit? Joanne, let us know when you hear a report. We're going to continue to pray and keep believing. Hold fast. Chandra, I prayed for you today. Everybody stretch your hands out towards your device. We're going to pray for Chandra again. We speak life and healing to her blood pressure, to her heart. All stress has to go. We put the pressure of this move on the word. Father, we thank you for the rhythm in her heart. In the name of Jesus, touch her. Cassandra, you would love Chandra. Cassandra's in Minnesota. If you, if you knew Chandra, I'm telling you, 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 would just, you guys would hit it off well. Chandra, you would love Cassandra. You're like, you're like sisters and don't even know it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm trying to teach the word and I feel the anointing come up on me so strong. I want to be obedient, not get ahead of him. The word says, having done all to stand. When it says having done all to stand, why not just stand? When the word says, think on these things, or don't be anxious about anything, but in everything in thanksgiving and prayer, let your requests be made known unto God. Why not just turn left and pull? Do what it says, and then God will do what he says. In my mind's eye, I can just see someone standing right there trying to do things in, in their own strength. And God's going to give you the ability to do it. Now, I've talked to you about releasing your faith tonight, but I want to get into teaching you how to release, release your hope. The glory of God is falling all over this world. And we said, well, people died everywhere. That's what the news media is telling you. But people are coming to Jesus at an accelerated rate. Angels have been loosed last night. They were loosed for the harvest. And I know that they're going out and about traveling around, grabbing the, grabbing the load, grabbing the harvest of what we need to get the job done. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for... Givers. Not one person has gone yet, but they will. They will. The Lord said they will. We're going to get these phones up and ring, ringing. 
The glory of God is falling all over the world, and the reports of the Holy Spirit's mighty acts are coming in from everywhere by the stacks. I showed them to you last night. More than any of us have ever seen. We're seeing end-time drama being played out right in front of our eyes. And I want you to know, this ministry has been given opportunities to take God's word across the world in shortwave radio, in television, in internet, in YouTube, and Facebook, and Periscope, right there to you where you are. The doors swing wide open and we're stepping through them as fast as we can. And the things that so many have prayed for and in the past have even died for are suddenly coming to pass. So let me say this. The iron is hot. It's time to strike. Let's strike while the iron is hot. This will help your faith. It certainly has helped mine. All of my life, I heard people say, I sure do hope so. I didn't really pay attention to it until I began living by faith. And, but then I realized how void of faith and power that phrase is full of no power, just void, empty. And I didn't understand why it was so empty when the Bible is full of the word hope. Hope means high expectation. That's the definition for hope, high expectations. When I heard people say, just trivializing, we're just hoping and a praying, brother. Sometimes I would just recoil in unbelief. My heart would cry out and I would say, why? Why is, a, is hope a bad word? Absolutely not. The problem is that most people don't really understand hope, okay? A lot of people don't understand it. The way we use the word hope in everyday speech and the meaning of hope as used in the Bible are two different things. When we say, I hope so, we simply mean, I desire or I wish it'll come to pass. Bible hope isn't wishing at all. And that's something, uh, here, here it is. It's earnest, confident, favorable, intense expectation. Have you met an intense person? Homer, I miss you. I'm so glad you're with me because I really miss you and your family. I really do. I think about you often. Have you been around an intense person? I feel like I'm intense, okay? Some people can't handle. They can handle an hour of me, three hours of me, but you probably couldn't live with me. I'm intense. My wife is intense. Together, we're really intense, and we have to be careful. Have you ever been around an intense person? Well, this Bible hope, it's not wishing and a praying. It's earnest confident, favorable, intense, red hot expectation. And that's something entirely different than just a hoping and a praying. Colossians 1, 23 talks about the hope of the gospel. Acts 26 verse six uses the phrase hope of the promise and it's referring to the covenant God made with Abraham. We learned last night. You can go back on our YouTube videos and see on yesterday's video how we learned about the covenant of promise. But now we're learning about the covenant of hope. And this hope of promise, referring to the covenant God made to Abraham, is powerful. That kind of hope is an earnest, intense expectation that's red hot. It comes from God's promises. And there's a vast difference between I wish something would happen and I intensely expect it to happen. Or we could say, 
I wish this processor mainframe would get healed and back to the shop. And then there's a, I intensely in expect God's going to send me five people tonight to sew a hundred dollars into getting this equipment fixed for this broadcast. You see the difference in Philippians chapter one. And I told you last night that Ephesians, Philippians, Galatians, Thessalonians, all these epistles are letters that Paul wrote to his followers. Jesus had letters written to his followers and you should have letters written to your followers. In Philippians 1, 19, and even in verse 20, this is what the apostle Paul says, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Jesus Christ. We talked about this last night. How, according to my earnest, red hot, passionate expectation, that's hope, my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. It makes no difference. Here, Paul used two Greek words together. One means earnest expectation, and the other translated hope, meaning the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yes, Cassandra, when it goes to the manufacturer, they're going to fix it, and they're going to send it back, and it will get it back on. Yes, it will. So Praise the Lord for that. Usually when someone is that expectant over something, everyone wants to know why. Why are you expecting? Especially if that person is expecting something that looks impossible. And, and, and really, this is where Hebrews 11, verse 1, you know that scripture, don't you? You know Hebrews 11, 1? Sure. Maybe you've memorized it. It's a powerful scripture to memorize. Faith is substance. The substance is two words. Substance. If you're a contractor, you know what a sub is. Substance. Sub is something you build on. Faith is substance. The underpinnings of things hoped for. Where does faith come from? Faith cometh from hearing and hearing and hearing, and hearing, and hearing, and hearing. <laughs> well, you get my point? Over and over, you're hearing the word of God. That's where faith cometh from, Romans 10, 17. Even if there is no um, natural evidence that what I hope for will come to pass, I can be expectant because I have faith in God's word. Now, we're talking about taking the head of the giant off in your life tired of being chased down by this giant once and for all. Don't hit him with rocks. Don't pellet him. Take his head off. We'll get to there in a moment. Hope won't work without faith and faith won't work without hope. Neither one will work without the word. You got to have the word on the inside of you and using the word out of your mouth. Hope is always expectant. I'm expecting for a miracle in your life every single day. I expect a financial miracle. I expect a, fin a physical miracle. I expect uh, relational miracles and family miracles. Hope is always expectant, looking toward the future. But faith now, on the other hand, is in the now. Now faith, without hope, faith has nothing to bring to pass. Without faith, tomorrow never comes. Put them together and look out, honey. Something powerful, atomic power with God. Shifts and transfers. You call it a miracle to God. It's the everyday work of the Father. To Jesus, it's just doing the everyday work of the Father. Something powerful, the atomic power with God explodes and 
shifts it right into your now. That's what I'm believing for. Without faith, tomorrow never comes. Put them together. Open faith together. And a shift, a transference, a transference. Say it out loud, a transference is coming. It's where the, the, it's the, it's transferring into your physical world. It's transferring into the physical world where the trouble is. The trouble is not in the spirit world. The trouble is in the natural world. Real Bible hope rejoices. That's why you hear me on here laughing and smiling and giggling and carrying away because I'm full of the Holy Ghost. Real Bible hope rejoices. And it begins to shout long before anything happens. Terry, in your life, in the natural, because it looks into the future and it sees you whole, W-H-O-L-E, wholeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. (laughs) Bible hope looks into your future and sees you debt free. If you see what hope sees, you'd be laughing right now. It, it looks into your future and it sees you totally healed. It looks into your future and sees you completely victorious in Jesus. I got a man working here at the house doing some work and I prayed with him three weeks ago. He wanted a job. I prayed with him and he's got that job. We saw it then, not now. Boy, what a good job he's got. Jesus is our hope. First Timothy one, one, how do I get that kind of hope? Somebody's saying, well, first of all, remember, you don't have to get it. You only have to release it. It's already in you. Are you hearing? It's Jesus in you. Remember Christ in you, the hope of glory. When Christ is in you, you have Jesus on the inside of you. You don't have to get hope. Hope is already in you. You have to learn to release it. And it takes four things in your life. And I'm going to give you these four things to release this hope into your life. All right. Before we do, let's stop a moment. Many of you have joined again and I'm doing my own little commercials tonight. And, um, I'm asking you to help me tonight. Uh, Very seldom. I ask you to help me now. Always. I ask you to sow seed, you know, and many of you are sowing seed and you're looking for a miracle response. You're looking for harvest and that's biblical and you should, but then there's time from time to time. I have a need and I bring that to you and you respond wonderfully to the need. I'm asking for five people or perhaps one person, one person to sow $500 or five people to sow a hundred tonight to meet the need for our, it's called a Comrex, a Com, Comrex stack phone system. It's a mainframe computer and it's not like your home desktop, although it's heavier and it's that size, you have to take the lid off to work on it. And I've been with my hands in it and I've had a tech support out there in Massachusetts, walking me through with tweezers and a tiny screwdriver and a flashlight, moving diodes and systems and shorting it out and restarting it. And oh, I don't like that. I just don't like it, but he's a professional, you know, And we got it working. Actually, we've got it working. 10 minutes later, boom, right back dead again. And he said, all right, we know now it's a, it's a power failure internally that needs to be replaced. So we have to now box it up and we have to put it either UPS or FedEx, send it all the way back to, where's it going? Devons, Massachusetts. And They're going to do all the repairs because they're the manufacturers of it. Nobody else really is authorized to manufacture, to repair it. And it's going to cost us about 500 with the shipping. And hopefully they'll give us a loaner and then our phones will be up and running. But that's what it was. And I didn't know what it was. So we finally got some answers. We got to the bottom of it and I've asked the Lord, and I'm going to take breaks throughout the night and ask you as people coming and going throughout the room tonight, who will hear the spirit of the Lord and hear God. Father, we thank you, Lord. Give me tonight some folks tonight, five people that will sit down and 
sow a seed to meet the need. There are five people who love this ministry. who are going to go to monthlypartners.com and they're going to sow a seed of $500 or they're going to sow a seed of $100. And as they sow it, I have great expectation tonight that the Lord's going to use that one watching, that one listening tonight in the name of Jesus. And that tomorrow morning, I can go down, box it up, and ship it. Praise the Lord. All right. Just a little bit has come in. The rest is coming. Come on. Come on. Get up. Get up. Get up. Go to monthlypartners.com and help me with this need. I, You want to know why I don't do television, why I didn't do television, why I didn't do radio? Here's the blunt truth of it all. It was too expensive putting too much demand on my spirit. For years, I've had famous people ask me, David Woods, why aren't you doing television? It's expensive. And I know God can meet the need, but that means I've got to let you know when there's a need. And I'm doing that tonight. And I know that people will be obedient, but I'm not going to let it you know, rock my world. I know God's got some people set up that's going to help me with this. All right, back to the word. Talking about releasing real Bible hope. Somebody said, well, how do I get that kind of hope? And I said, first of all, you don't get that kind of hope. You've already got it. If it's Christ in you, the hope of glory, you've got the hope of glory in you. So it's not about getting hope. So he said, oh, you're giving them false hope. I don't need to do that. Uh, Jesus is already in them. They've already got hope. They have to learn to release that hope. They have to learn to release their faith. So there are four steps that you can take. And I want you to write this down. This is on the way to taking the head of the giant off, okay? Because God didn't call you to sit around all your life and throw the same stones at the same giant and just inflict him or just hurt him. No, honey, you get the sword of the spirit out and you chop his head off once and for all, and you don't have to deal with it ever again. You hear me what I'm saying? Number one, since hope comes from the promises, find the promises of God in God's word that cover your situation. Now look, is it 30? Is it 50? Is it five? Is it two? Is it one? I think it's going to be more than one, but find out the promises of God's word that deal with that subject. Now I did that getting into this house. I built this house from the ground up brand new and I had to go, um, boy, you talk about using my faith. I didn't know why the Lord would want me to have such a big house. I didn't know. I thought, well, what's the matter with the house I got now? But what he didn't, what I didn't know is that I was going to have five children, seven of us. <laughs> oh Lord, I'm glad he didn't tell me, but he prepared me and he put me in a big house and uh, I built it from the ground up and watched God do it. And now I see why, but I had to stand. It's not like everybody else in the world. You know, they just go get a job. They just work nine to five. They have good credit. They get financing. They put the down payment. They move in, sign, sealed, delivered, done. Not with God's people. Okay. First of all, the devil thinks he owns the earth. That means he, he thinks he owns the land. So you have to get a little bit more powerful in your faith and in your hope and in the word than just the average wicked person in the world. Okay. You are a child of God. That means the very time you take hold of dirt or land or property, that means you're going to have a fight on your hands. Now, some of you didn't know that till just now. Before this, not even a brick was laid. They had a caterpillar and they were grading this lot off here. And I came out with my wife and I picked up a handful of dirt and I threw it in the wind and I prophesied over this house. And I said, earth, earth, hear the word of the Lord. Now, Jackie, you can do that with your real estate. That's right. Oh, I tell you, don't tempt me, Jackie. 
I've been seeing some of those houses in Georgia where you live. Hey, wow. I said, oh, Jesus. <laughs> the earth is the Lord's. It doesn't belong to the devil, you know? So you're going to have to find promises. Now, if it's not dealing with a house or property, maybe it's dealing with your children. Maybe it's dealing with your business or starting a business or, or maybe it's your work or your job or somebody harassing you or, or whatever. Find the promises that pertain. That's what I'm trying to say. Find the promises of God that pertain to your situation and that cover your situation. That's number one. Number two, lay hold upon the hope that is set before you. Lay hold of it. Hebrews 6.18, point your finger at the Bible promise and say out loud, I believe that it's mine. It's talking about me in the name of Jesus. Can you do that? Let's do it. Come on, Vincent. Glory to God, brother, playing those drums and worshiping the Lord. So proud of Vincent. You get a hold of the scripture. All right. All right. Here's, here's, I just opened up to one, probably because it's marked. This would pertain to me. They are not an own ministry and spirit sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Talking about the angelic spirits working on behalf of my harvest. So I point to that scripture and I say out loud, I believe that it's mine. It's talking about me. Say that. I believe that. It's mine. It's talking about me. That's step number two. This is how you lay hold of faith and lay hold of hope and releasing hope in your life. Bible way. Number three. Think about that promise all day long. See yourself carrying the Bible answer. When you go to work, and you've got superiors to answer to. You, everybody has somebody to answer to. I don't care if you're the president, okay? <laughs> I don't care if you're the governor or the king or the pastor or the ruler or the top dog, whatever you are. Everybody has somebody to answer to. And I want you to walk into that boardroom, walk into that hiring room, walk into that break room, walk into wherever you're walking, that classroom and say, I see the answer and it's with me. I see myself with the answer. Say that out loud. I see myself with the answer. That's why when you see myself hugging the word, I'm not just getting weird, okay? I'm holding the answer. Second Corinthians 10, three, four, five, and six. It says, this is the way the battle is fought and won. Cast down imaginations. Bring into captivity every thought. Not just a few thoughts. Every thought that disagrees with your promise from God. So, I believe it. It's mine. And it's talking about me. I see myself with the answer. And I'm thinking about it all day and I'm winning my battle. And here comes the thought. Well, you can't get that because you know, your great granddaddy, he didn't get it. And his daddy didn't get it. And their daddy didn't get it. And nobody in your family had it. I bind that thought in the name of Jesus. I pull down that negative thought in the name of Jesus. I put it underneath my feet. I cage you. I put that thought in prison. I set you outside the door. You're stinking thinking. You're not allowed in me. My mind is renewed by the word. In the, this is how I talk to the thoughts that come. I don't know what kind of evil, wicked, nasty thought you're thinking, but it's not your thought. You shouldn't allow it in. You shouldn't allow pigs in your kitchen. You don't allow pigs in your kitchen. That's place for food. You got your lettuce and your mashed potatoes and gravy and your meatloaf and everything. <laughs> you got it up there. And you would let a filthy, filthy, muddy, magnet-infested hog up and slop hog up into your kitchen. Well, that's what you're doing when you allow evil, wicked, nasty thoughts come that are twisted and wrong and perverted and 
and from the devil. And if you don't talk to those thoughts, you know what's going to happen? The world's going to diagnose you as gone crazy. They're going to say something. They're going to say, they're going to say all kind of crazy stuff. They'll say they're bipolar. They're schizo. They're, they're paranoid. They got a label for everything. They got a label for everything. You don't guard your thoughts. Suicide is a thought. You better hear me on radio. You better hear me today because the devil's not playing around. He's meaning for keeping somebody. He doesn't care if you're a child or if you're an, in your golden years. <laughs> he doesn't care. He'll pick on an old person just as much as he'll pick on a baby. And you better know how to deal with those thoughts. I cast down imaginations. I bring into captivity every thought, not just a few thoughts, every thought, every thought that disagrees with the promises of God. I believe it. It's mine. It's talking about me. Put your name in there. See yourself with the answer. Fight the battle in faith. You're not fighting the devil. You're fighting those thoughts in faith. You re this is how you release hope. High expectations. Well, this is helping somebody tonight. I can feel it. Not just a few thoughts. Every thought that disagrees with your promise, look at it as a filthy, nasty, muddy, maggot-infested slop hog that moved into your bed. Are you going to sleep in that bed when that hog got in there and just rolled all over and wiped the maggots on your sheets? Heaven help us. No, <laughs> you're going to, you're going to clean house. You're not going to sit there in the bed and Would you please leave my bed, Mr. Piggy. No, no, no. You, some of you acting that way. Some of you acting that way. Uh, please, Mr. Piggy, how'd you get in here? Please don't come into my bed. What are you doing? No, that's not the way you treat a filthy, nasty, flea-infested varmint that's been rolling around in the maggot dirt worms and filth and corona and... Ugh. It's up in your bed of your mind. How do you take care of it? How do you run it out? Oh, don't get Joanne started. I'll tell you what, she'll get a shot. She'll find a Kentucky shotgun. And y'all be having bacon and eggs in the morning. <laughs> right? She'll run it out. And that's what you've got to do with those thoughts. Treat every thought as if it's an intruder. And say, if that thought doesn't line up with the word of God, I believe it. It's mine. It's talking about me. I see myself with the answer. If you don't think that way and you start just taking every old little slop hog thought in your mind, it will ruin you. It will bring you to destruction. Look, you've gone to Kroger. You've gone to Fred Myers. You've gone to Walmart. You've gone to all these stores. And do you know why? You know why you see so many crabs running around? Because they've been listening to slop hog thoughts all day long. And they're sleeping with them. And they're living with them and they're eating with them, and they're drinking with them, and they're, they're working with them, and every day, day in and day out, they're thinking thoughts of suicide, and killing, and murder, and gambling, and drinking, and drugging, and sexing, and whoring, and blah, 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 all the way, and cheating, and every vile slop hog thought you can think of is coming in their mind, and they didn't put a guard over there, and so they can't grab hope. Are you getting this tonight? They cannot grab hope. Don't just cast down a few thoughts. Cast down every thought that disagrees with that promise you found today. Did you find a promise that applies to you? Find 10 of them. Find 12 of them. Number four, put the promises in your mouth all day, every day. But my God shall supply all my need 
according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I believe that. It's mine. It's talking about me. It's talking about you. I see myself with that answer. I cast down every opposing thought that tries to slip in against it. I'm telling you, you can do this for, for your state, for your city, for your town. You can do this for your family reunion. You can do this on your job, for your job. You can do it right there for a furniture item or whatever, a car, whatever you're believing for. Put those promises in your mouth every day, all day, every day. And say your faith by saying those verses. I've said it before. Faith is like Siri. It's voice activated. Faith has to be spoken. That's why I don't believe in unspoken prayer requests. Brother, I got an unspoken. Well, bless your little heart. We don't believe in those. I say that to run everybody out of the church, but that's the truth. Because faith is activated by your words. Say your faith by saying these verses that apply to you. You believe it. It's yours. It's talking about me. I see myself with the answer. I don't let it, the wrong thoughts hold me captive. And I say my faith by saying those verses. And I say them before the Lord when I slip out of bed in the morning. I say them before the devil who's opposing the harvest. And I say them loud. Hey, devil, did you hear? But my God shall supply all my need according to his, Jesus' riches and glory through Christ. You hear that? Oh, he doesn't like to hear that. He's the leader of the slop hogs. Say them in your own ears. Hundreds, even thousands of times, say them until the earnest, intense, favorable, confident, red-hot expectations begin to rise on the inside of you. Now that's hope, brother. <laughs> that's real Bible gospel hope. High expectations. I expect it because God promised it. I believe it's happening for me because God promised it. As far as I'm concerned, it's done. As far as I'm concerned, haven't even looked yet. The $500 is going to be there by the time I'm done with this. It could even be there right now. And that's the way I want you to act. That's the way I want you to start working the word. You are not limited to your nasty, old, heathen, wicked boss at the job. Some of you think you are. So he said, well, I tried it. I quit my job and just trusted God. That's not how you get anything. In fact, you'll go broke. You'll question God. You'll get frustrated. You'll throw in the towel. You'll say it doesn't work, brother. Yeah, it doesn't work because you ain't working it. You've got to find the word of God and to believe on God's word. And the whole cause, hear me, the cause of your life has to be gospel related. It's why you give. That's why a lot of good causes out there and I don't care to give to them, even though they're good. I like great causes. Amen. Yes, Doris, the word of God is in thee, in thy mouth, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. So as far as I'm concerned, it's done. Why? Now, before I go on uh, to take in the head of the giant off, I want to I wanna lay my hands somehow on you. I can't do it. Maybe we can come up close to the device. If you touch your device, it'll move, you know. I tell my wife, don't fumble fingers. You're moving the screen, you know. We always, all of us do that. So just stretch your hand out right now. Can you stretch your hand out right now? I want to pray. I want to pray. And um, I want to come in an agreement with you. We really have our hands full, keeping up with all that the Lord has called us to do. But we can do it. Why? Because the greater one lives on the inside of you. Say that out loud. Say, the greater one lives on the inside of me. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, I come in agreement with my brother. I come in an agreement with my sister. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And Father, before we go into this next segment of how to take the head of the giant off, I pray that faith and hope rise up big in my brother and my sister. And Lord, they not only release their faith with their words, but they release their hope by standing on the word of God. Help them to find four, five, six, seven Bible verses that support their need, their want, their desire, their their believing you for something, Lord. And I come in agreement with them right now in Jesus' mighty name. Satan, you loose your hands off of God's people's property. You loose your hands off my brother and my sister. You loose them and let them go in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that sweeps down right now where they are, that the blessing of the Lord maketh them rich and adds no sorrow to them. Oh, God. Give them a miracle harvest, I pray, in the name that is above every other name, in Jesus' holy name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear the Lord say you're about to win in life. You are about to win in life. You're winning in life. Listen, beloved. Listen, child of God. I declare, I decree, I declare you are about to win in this life. Not when you get to heaven. Now, 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 now in Jesus' name. Oh, throw your hands up and worship God right now. Throw your hands up and thank God that renewed hope is coming. Faith is being released and hope is being released in you. Before I go on to this next segment, let me say one more time. Let me check where we are. I sense in my spirit that while I was teaching and praying and preaching and ministering, people are responding. Wow. We are just $100 away from meeting the need. Alex, yes, I'll send you that children's Bible. Alex, you have two children, I think. Thank you, Alex from Michigan. Thank you, Gary from Washington. Thank you, Cassandra from Minnesota. Thank you, Jackie from Georgia. We're $100 short. We're going to meet this need. We're going to get it shipped out. This is what I'm talking about. I could have fallen all to pieces. In the old days, I said, oh, what are we going to do? You know, wring our hands. No, not no more. Because I've learned how to put my faith to it. I've learned how to release my hope. Nothing in Cash App right now. If you want to give with Cash App, that'll work. Thank you, Father, for that one person that's contemplating to sow. This will meet the need of this ministry. And I don't come all the time with a need-based ministry. But Father, from time to time, when we have needs, we bring it up. And tonight is those that night. Thank you for my brother, for my sister, for meeting the need. And Father, those people that have given tonight, I ask you to bless them abundantly above all that they could ever ask and think in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. We bless you, Father. Glory to God. Well, if if the Lord had showed me things that I'm doing right now back then, 
I don't know if I would be able to handle it. I would believe it because I knew it was going to happen, but I don't know if I would handle it to the capacity of where it is. Well, those moments are here now. Those moments are here now. And these are truly days we've all prayed to see it. A flood of the Holy Spirit is being poured out. Miracles of healing and deliverance are been gushing forth in our meetings everywhere in churches at home. And now there's a shift and a transfer where we can pray for people for miracles in front of their TV set right there in front of their devices, their computer, wherever people are talking about Jesus, that's where miracles happen. And recently I've had people testify that the Lord had done this miracle or that miracle and how we laid hands on them in the name of Jesus and something happened. These things are wonderful. And this is only the beginning. Just a few days ago, I heard the Lord said, if I told you the things I'm going to do, could you believe it? Oh, I want to believe Lord. He said, it's going to be bigger than what it is now. And he, God, is anywhere near the vision that the Lord has given you. Without a vision, the people perish. When Jesus said that God, this gospel of the kingdom would be preached to all nations as a witness, and then the end would come, he meant every word of that. No religion can stop it. No government can slow it down. No devil can stop it. It's happening right now in front of our very eyes. And I don't want to miss, I don't want to miss a bit of it. Our God is moving. There's an old song all over this world. The spirit is moving all over the world. As the prophet said, it would be all over the world. There's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Yeah. And so it's happening right now. We want to get, just jump right up in the middle of it, you know? (laughs) When you got a three-year-old, you know, they get little rubber boots on and mama takes them out. She says, now don't get up in the mud. And what did they do when they see a mud puddle? Oh, no, they just don't tap on it. Well, the girls do. The boys jump right square in the middle of it. Mud goes everywhere. Have you seen that? Oh, how disheartening. Well, I'm kind of like that with the Lord. I want to be just jumping right in the middle of it because our God is moving. And let's get right here in the middle of it with him. And I want to share something with you from the word of God with you today. The Lord showed me a while back uh, while I was ministering. And it was so riveting, so powerful, so exciting. It's been in the forefront of my mind. And you can find the story if you want to turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel 17. And 22 through 27 is where I want to focus. But 1 Samuel 17, 22 through 27. It says, and David ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. I salute you, my brothers and sisters. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and they were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. In other words, 
pay all his debt. He's debt free. And David spoke to the men that stood by him saying, what shall be done to the man that kills the Philistine and taketh away the reproach of Israel? Notice he didn't say, I wonder if I could get his daughter. <laughs> I wonder if I could be debt free. I know there was a human incentive involved there, but that really, we don't know David's heart, but this is something different that's coming out of his heart, out of his mouth. He said, what should be done to this man that kills this Philistine, taking away the reproach of Israel? For who is this uncircumcised or no covenant Philistine? When my boys were circumcised, we didn't just make it a medical thing. It's no surprise to me that 60% of Americans are no longer circumcising their male boys. We are an uncovenanted, an uncircumcised heathen Philistine giant like that. When you don't live by the covenant promises, it's a sign. Now, we don't live by the law. I understand that, but it's big to me. The Bible's big to me. And, you know, I'm not Jewish, not that I know of, but uh, when I, when I go anywhere and do anything, I always want to know well, how did Jesus do it? You know, I eat Middle Eastern food and I always look at it and I think, wow, this is the way Jesus ate. I see saffron sprinkled on all that rice and I think, hmm, that's the kind of rice Jesus must have eaten because this Bible is a Middle Eastern book with Middle Eastern customs, with Middle Eastern food. It wasn't a Big Mac, baby. It was, it was Middle Eastern, okay? It wasn't American. And so I think about this. David says, who is this non-covenant, wicked, really might as well said, who is this dog that he should divide, defy the armies of the living God? Who is this? Look at it. 1 Samuel 17. 27, and the people answered him after this manner, saying, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Now, now listen, if you read those verses real careful, I was knocking soda pop all over the studio here yesterday. I got to be careful where my sleeves are going. If you read those verses carefully, you'll see that the statement David made in verse 26 was actually spoken before the Israelite men spoke the words recorded in 25. So let's reverse those two verses and read them that way. Verse 26, and David spoke to the men that stood by him saying, what shall be done to the man that kills the Philistine and take away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. And the men of Israel said, have you seen? We're reading backwards, 26, 25. And David said, have you, have you seen? And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel, he has come up. It shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And the people answered, verse 27, and the people answered him after this manner. For 40 days, twice a day, a giant with big eyes and big feet and a big mouth shouted curses. And for 40 days, the army of Israel cowered down before that old thug in fear. And then David came along. Instead of seeing a nasty brute of a beast of a giant, instead of seeing that, David saw golden connections, omnipotent opportunities. What does the man get who kills this giant? David asked himself. 
<laughs> Have you seen how big he is? One Israelite, you know, the private over in the army shouts out. Have you seen that? Did you see how big his, his toe is as big as your head? Well, David wasn't worried about how big he was. In fact, David's eyes, Goliath's size made him a more valuable prize. In David's eyes, Goliath's size made him a big prize. I'm not, when I don't do any deer hunting, but when I was a younger person, we didn't run out there looking for a scrawny old puny little elk. Come here, little elk, so we can kill. No, honey, they look for the big ones. The bigger, the better. And the apostle Paul had the same kind of victorious attitude. He said he gloried in tribulations. He considered them opportunities for huge victories. Opportunities to give more glory to Jesus. And the power of God's word working inside of him. So listen, like Paul, David knew the power of God's word. And he wasn't intimidated. No way. Uh Uh-uh. No, he wasn't intimidated, not one bit. Some of you are intimidated. Intimidated by what what the giant looks like and what it sounds like and how how he walks and how big they are and how ugly they is and how stinky they are. Mm. When Goliath stepped out, David knew the power of God's word. He wasn't intimidated by the lies of his enemy. And when Goliath stepped out, he shouted at David. Am I a dog? Thou cometh to me with staves. Come to me. I will give thy flesh unto the birds of the air and to the beast of the field. I'm going to feed you to the lions after the birds are done with you. This is a brute, man. 1 Samuel 17, 43, 44. Some of you got things going on in your life right now where you feel their threatenings are just like that. Oh, that doesn't work. I'm going to lose my job. Well, you might as well just say to some people that you're going to throw them to the birds. But David didn't turn and run like everyone else had for over six weeks. He didn't see a giant. He saw a prize. And shouted back in the name of the Lord God of hosts. Listen, beloved, I don't want you to see a giant. I want you to see the reward. God is on a reward system and he's about to bless you. And something big is about to happen to you. Well, you should say, I'll take that. You should blurt it out right where you are and say, I'll receive that. Say it, something big is about to happen to me. He didn't see a giant. He saw the reward system. Once David began to shout, (laughs) the giant couldn't get in another word. David's words in God's name took over. If you read that passage, you'll find out it was the word of God coming out of his mouth and not necessarily the stone. That's really when he won the battle. He spoke in God's name. And from that point, the battle was the Lord's. You may have five stones in your hand. Somebody said, why five stones? Well, you know, somebody said he had four brothers. (laughs) Or five five brothers. And he was waiting. David did something very important. He ran towards the prize, not the giant, the prize. He attacked it. He knocked it down. He stood on it, jumped up, and I can see the Israelites. Oh, Lord God. 
wasn't about to let it get up ever again. When you knock this giant down that you're facing, I want you to get on top of it and stand on it and don't ever let it up. I mean, honey, just jump on it and say, you're not getting back up again. I did this when a similar situation, devil knocked me down, took me to the hospital. Uh, I was incarcerated at the hospital. <laughs> I'm saying that lightfully. It was a bummer. I hated it. Heart. They said a heart attack, and I sat there, and I got some scriptures on my heart. And when I was done, the Lord Jesus said, I've given you a brand new heart. And when they, when they come out of the surgery, the second time, they said, there's nothing we can do for you. Whatever was there before is not there now. It's gone. You got a perfect heart. Yeah, Jesus, the greater one, the anointing lives on the inside of me, and I'm born to give hell trouble, and I'm born to give people heaven. But I had to stand on the word. And when I got up on that heart issue, I stood on that giant and I said, I'm going to cut your head off again. I'll never have another heart attack again. And I'm living long and strong. I'm living to an old age. How old? 120. My secretary, Vera, told me last night, she said, I'm only living to 100. She's 85. I said, Vera, that's 15 years. She said, that's right. She said, don't, don't be praying no funny way. She said, I'm living to 100. I don't want to live to 120. What? Well, that's her desire. I may just make her mad and raise her up at 100. <laughs> Doris, how long are you going to live for? 120, girl. Come on now. No aches and no pains and you're in your right mind. Amen? All right, listen. In Mark eleven twenty three, 23, Jesus essentially told us to do the same thing. He said, speak to the mountain, cast it into the sea. What kind of mountain, what kind of giant is facing you right now? Does a step out every morning when you get up and shout at you, you're failing, you're going to die, you're not going to make it, you're unemployed, <laughs> you're losing your family, you're losing your mind, oh, everything's going bad, everything's going wrong. You're going to this, you're going to die. You're not going to make it. I, you're too big. You owe too much. You're getting bigger every day. The mountain's growing. What are you going to do? Shut up. Shut up, devil. Shut up in the name of Jesus. That's the way you're going to have to talk like that. Tell the devil, shut up. And get some Bible behind you. Don't just wave the gun. Put some ammunition in that thing. Tell the devil to shut up and start firing. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Take it back. Shout back in Jesus' name like David did. Don't hush. Don't be quiet. Don't let the mountain get in another word. Every time your mind tries to replay what the mountain said, you take over with God's words and your words. Follow David's example. Go to the river. Go to God's word. That's the river. Get your smooth stones, God's promises. Put them in your in your heart. Put them in your bag. That's your heart. Put the stone in your sling. That's your mouth. And then run towards the mountain and r let the stones fly. Let it rip, baby. All your might. Let it rip. Knock the mountainous giant in the head and climb up on its chest. Take its sword. Cut the head of the giant off with your testimony. Tell everyone that the giant is dead in your life. Say it out loud. Say the giants are dead in my life. Say the mountains are moved in my life. That's right. Amen. Don't ever let them get up. Come on, say it. Come on. Come on, Jackie. Come on, Doris. Come on, Kathy. Say it. The mountains are moved in my life. The Goliaths are dead in my life. Hey, glory to God. Give me some shouting music. All right, one more thing. One more thing. I don't even know where we are in time. David took the giant's armor off, and he stripped him down. He stripped him. Jesus stripped the devil of all his armor. 
You're the one with the battle suit and it's God's armor. Get dressed, move out. Oh, thank God. This has thrilled my spirit. I hope it's thrilled yours. I want you to think about it. We're the body of Christ. Doesn't get any better than that. Think about that. The champion of our salvation is also the Lord of our harvest. Open up your heart. Let the flood of his grace and the goodness of his power wash the mountains right out to sea. Father, I pray every giant is dead in my brother and sister's life. Every mountain is dissolved and flooded out to sea in the name of Jesus. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold. Loose my brother, loose my sister, and let him go in Jesus' name. The blessing of the Lord maketh you rich and adds no sorrow to you. No good thing will he withhold from them who walk uprightly. The hand of the Lord is upon you in the name of Jesus. I declare, I declare it in Jesus' name. Are you ready to shout? While I've been ministering the word, $650 has come in. We've gone over and above. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody praise the Lord right there where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Come on, praise him. That phone system's getting fixed in the name of Jesus. It's going on a FedEx or UPS tomorrow morning. In the name of Jesus, amen? Oh, yeah, it is. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Let me see what's going on tonight. Oh, y'all are just chatting away in the Facebook room. Yes, Mindy, I feel that too. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, oh, how I love Jesus. Yes, Chandra, I'm live with you tonight. Because he first loved me. To me, he is so wonderful. Come on, sing it with me. You remember singing it in church? To me, <laughs> he is so wonderful and I love him to me he is so wonderful ah yes Jesus because he first because he first because he first loved me. Now, Father, I pray that every heavenly blessing, every heavenly reward would come down upon my brother and my sister today, the ones that are watching, the ones that are listening. I pray that a special harvest comes from those that have sowed into this need. I pray, Father, Ephesians 6, 8, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. I thank you, Father, that they have taken care of the ministry need. And now, Father, it's your turn to take care of their need. In the name of Jesus, do it, Lord. Take care of every need that they have right now. Bundle it up. Deal with it. Take care of the particulars. God, send them good people, good people into their life right now. In Jesus' name, do it, Lord. 
I pray. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like traveling on. No, not really. I feel like staying right here with you. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, yes, Lord. Father, I speak the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord over Kathy's situation right now. Satan, take your hands off of her situation right now. The hand of the Lord is reaching out bigger, better every day. Mountain is not growing. The mountain is leaving. I come against everything that would come against Alex and his wife and his children. Mountains are shrinking. Giants are collapsing. Hallelujah. And the road is opening with ease like never before. Alex, I want you to call in. You're going to have a testimony in three days. Within three days, you're going to have a testimony. Maybe even sooner. Oh, yeah. Gary in Seattle. Father, touch him right now. Alex is in Michigan. Kathy's in Atlanta. Gary's in Seattle. We got the, we got the country covered. Lord, give him a miracle. Let every giant fall that stands in his way. Bring every harvest closer to him right now. In the name of Jesus, help him to cut off the head of the giant. Hey! Lord, touch Cassandra and her business. Touch her husband. Touch her family and her business right now. Let the power of the Lord Jesus Christ minister right now into their home. And I see something shifting around and moving around. But the Lord is positioning it in the right place at the right time, Cassandra. I don't know what that means, but... The Holy Spirit is doing it for you right now. And every giant falls, every mountain is moved in the name that is above every other name. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for it, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do it, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. There it is. Jackie, I see every obstacle has to get out of your way. Every mountain has to be flattened. Every giant's head is coming off. You will not have obstacles that get in your way. All these expensive obstacles that come between you and what God wants you to do. I command it to go in Jesus' name. You're in flood stage, Jackie. Rick, you're in flood stage. The flood stage of God. Bring it, Lord. Bring it down upon them in a heavier way. I see the Lord is shoving somebody out of the flow. God says, you're supposed to have the blessing of that. And somebody got greedy and they had a greedy eye that went after it. And I see the Lord just pushing them back and you're going to walk right in and you're going to take it because you're blessed to be a blessing. Hey, glory. That's a word, Jackie. That's a word, Rick. I saw it just now. Thank you, Lord. Lord, touch Liana right there in Minnesota. Father, she's a fisher of men. She's not afraid to share the gospel. She's, she's a soul winner. Use her, oh God. Yes, something just broke through, Mindy. That's right, Mindy. Something broke through. It was a breakthrough just now. I felt it. I know you did too. Back on the white horse 
your way. The king is coming to town. Woo! Glory! The king is coming to town. King is coming to town. Every giant that's in my way. Down. It's coming down today. The king is coming to town. King Jesus is coming to town. Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory, 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 glory. Wasn't planning on singing that tonight. Chandra, I speak deliverance to your heart. I speak freedom and deliverance to your blood pressure. I speak freedom and deliverance to your body right now. I come against every obstacle, every giant, every demon, every devil. You foul spirit, you get up and go right now. We break every curse, every hex, every vex, every spell. We command it to get off your home. Loose now and go in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, the king is coming to town. The king is coming to town. Every giant that's in my way. Ah, you know it. His head is coming down, it's coming off. The head of the giant is coming off, you hear me? Every giant in your life is falling, collapsing. Mountains are dissolving. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy the word of the Lord to you. I declare it in the, in the name of Jesus. a song? No, I'm writing. I'm writing. I'm writing. I'm writing. I don't know what it is. I'm just singing it, okay? The king is coming to town. You're going to take the giant's head off. You're going to stop throwing stones at him and you're going to jump on his chest because you're armed and dangerous. You're dangerous in the kingdom of God. You're taking out the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and you're not just going to poke him a few times. You got the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords on the inside of you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. The King is coming to town. Don't you know David walked away as a king? You're a king and a priest. You're a king and a priest. You are powerful because the greater one lives on the inside of you. His head's coming off. The mountain is moving. Hey, hey, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There's victory in the house. Glory, glory, glory. You ought to shout. You should have been dead by now. You know you should have been dead by now, but the Lord kept you safe. The Lord kept you in the pavilion of his love. He kept you under the hollow of his hand. He kept you in the shadow of the power of the Almighty. He kept you right where you needed to be. Oh, the king is right there living on the inside of you. When you show up, every mountain's going to move out of the way. It's going to flatten. Every giant's going to sit down and listen and you take his head off. You don't play with giants. You kill them in the name of Jesus. You don't just monkey around with them. You just don't play uh, pity patter and, and footsie with a giant. No, you take out the sword of the spirit and you take his head off in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. No, I don't want to be on pause. I want to sing it again. Come on. Your faith is stirred in the name of Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. Where are you calling from? Jesus, I just want to thank you. 
I want to thank you for being so good. Jesus, I want to thank you. Thank you for being so good. Jesus, I want to thank you. Thank you for being so good. I forgot the rest of those words. Oh, it's so old, Doris. I forgot. <laughs> Alex from Michigan. Brother, I'm, I'm charged up tonight. I'm excited tonight, aren't you? Oh, yes. Tell me what's on your mind. I thank God for you. I thank God for your sowing, your sacrificial seed. We're going to get these phones working so I don't have to put this uh, little Mickey Mouse thing up to the microphone. I mean, here we got professional. The, the envy of every FM studio would love to have what we got. And God's people have it. The believers have it. And it's not working. We need to get it fixed. And you're part of that. And I appreciate that. I want to thank you and others that step forward tonight. But what's on your mind tonight? What's on your heart? Well, when we were when we were pay, praying, when you wanted to pray for us, and you wanted us to lift our hands up um, and, and aim and at our devices. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. Sitting there, and when the spirit, when you said it, the spirit moved. And I held, I held my hands up, and as I'm sitting there, my arms started to get tired. Uh huh. And I started, to, I started to let them down, but the Lord said, "Raise your hands up." Uh huh. The Lord said, "Raise your hands up." And when, when he said that to me, it brought me right back to a scripture. Yes. Bible. Aaron and her with Moses, right? You got it. Exodus seventeen eleven. Yeah. Read it to us. Um, and, so it, it, and so it was when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, and Malik prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy. So they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat on it. And Aaron and her supported his hands, one on one, one on one side, and this other on the other side. And his hands were steady. Yeah, yeah. So they going down to the sun. Uh huh. So Joseph defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. It came to mind when I'm sitting there and my arms are starting to go tired, and I wanted to let it down. That the Lord said, "Keep your hands raised. Uh huh. Keep your hands raised." Ooh, There's Alex, so that's prophetic. That's, that's prophetic, life. brother. And that we and we wait and we wait for the Lord. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We don't wait long enough for what He told us to do. It's not always. It can be painful to wait. Yeah. And it can be painful to go through the fire. We're not meant to stay in the fire. We're supposed meant to go through the fire, and the Lord's right there with us. That's it. We can't let down our hands because if we do, we're going to lose our victory. We're going to lose our victory. If we don't keep our hands up and do what the Lord says, and here's the great thing, you're not alone. Not alone. Not alone. That's it. When you need support, when you're going in for praying, when we've got people sitting there next to one another, when we got one another praying for one another, you have your support. You have your other arms. Yeah. You have your Aaron. Yeah. Your next to you to keep your arms up to earn the victory. That's right. Absolutely. And Brother Alex, I was thinking about this, that, this is why it's so important. Those listening by radio, you know, find me, seek my Facebook page, seek my YouTube page, because while I'm ministering the word, there's a lot of ministry going on in this room with Facebook. You know, I don't know about YouTube, but Facebook's got a lot of activity going on, as you can see. And it's so true. Our hands are lifted up. And brother, you're lifting my hands up, just like Aaron and her did to Moses. And as long as his hands was lifted up, the waters are parted. The victory came. And this is so good. Where'd you say it was? Exodus where? Exodus 17, 11. 17, 11. All right. This is a good word, brother. And we stand on it tonight. Amen. Amen. Listen. And I've been, I've been, you've been saying something about, you know, so seed. it was, it was time to give. Yeah. Um, the last two, three days, it, it, it slipped my mind, but. It's great how the Lord works. So it slipped my mind to do my to do my my tithing and my giving. Yeah. Not that I didn't want to do it. Right. Just that it wasn't time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Just that it wasn't time. And you stepped into so the time of I faith. Wanted to put something that you've been saying to the test. So, but and essentially, I'm putting the Lord to the test because He said we can test Him in this area. Yes. Amen. Another space. Only in the giving. 
So I was sitting there and I was waiting. I knew I was going to give tonight. Yeah. But I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wait till the spirit's hot and I'm going to wait. <laughs> That's like Joanne. Joanne says, I'm going to wait till the anointing's moving. Uh, Alex, you're in Michigan, and what you're saying is ministering to so many people tonight. But Mindy, Mindy is near to, in, near uh, Olympia, Washington, close. Not everybody knows where Aberdeen is, but they know where Olympia is. And she said, this really wrecked me, brother. This really, I needed this in my spirit. I've been revived. Yes. And me too. Me too. And we all have. Amen. Amen. All right, brother. I love you. Give your wife a hug and those children, and we'll get that uh, children's Bible out to you. We thank God for you. Amen. Okay. And pray because of the dams, the, the uh, two dams that broke here in Michigan. Yes, I saw that. Is it close to you? Well, that's only about an hour away from me. Oh, my goodness. Lord, we pray that you'll stop the flow of the water somehow. Dry it up. Oh, yeah. Dry it up, Father, in Jesus' name, and cause... Oh, God, cause this state to have revival. You love people in Michigan. And, Father, we need a breakthrough in that state, Lord. Spiritually, politically, in every way, we need a breakthrough in Michigan, Lord. God, open the eyes of the hearts of the people of Michigan, Lord, and bring a spirit-felt revival all over that state, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. I love you, Brother Alex. Thanks for calling me. Love you, too. Thanks for partnering with me beautiful to have partners. I pray for him every day. I pray for you every day. Oh, yeah. Jesus, I just want to thank you. Come on, right there where you are. Mindy, begin to praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, I want to thank you. Thank you for being my friend. Jesus, I want to thank you. Thank you for being my friend. Somebody got to help me finish those words. I forgot. We just have to write them. We just have to make our own words up. Jesus, I want to thank you. Thank you for being my friend. Kathy, do you remember it? Kathy's too young. I think Kathy's 25. Isn't she? Lord, I love my partners. Lord, I love these people, Father. Now, Jesus, I thank you that all spiritual blessing and all fresh anointings are imparted upon my brother and my sister, Lord, that they receive the engrafted word into their spirit. They will not give up. They will not be slack concerning the promises of the Lord. They'll put the word in their mouth and they'll step out every day. I thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Tomorrow, tomorrow night. Is it tomorrow night I'm coming on? Yeah. I guess I am. I want to talk to you how to get out of the recession and get into the revival. How to get out of recession and get into revival. Where there's always joy and abundance and happiness and, and abundance and peace and no strife. I'm going to talk to you about that tomorrow. And I really want you to invite three or four people. I want you to tell them, hey, join me on Facebook. Go to this spot. Give them the link. Or, or join me on YouTube. Give them the link. And let's see God do some great things, tremendous things that God is going to do. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I'm hearing phones ring. And I know God's going to fix these phones. All right? Stretch your hands out. This phone is not working properly. Stretch your hands out. That's all I can pull it. See it flashing back and forth? It's not supposed to do that. Stretch your hands out towards these phones. This is the, the handset that's not working. The mainframe is just behind me. And thank God, God gave us the finances to send it off. But I want you to set, set your hand towards it. Father, we come in agreement towards these phone systems. Lord, it's the envy of the world. You blessed us with it, but they've got to work. So thank you for the finances to send it. Thank you for the finances to get it fixed. And I thank you, Father, that it's fixable. 
And Lord, it'll come back to us soon, quickly. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people shouted amen. Amen. Hallelujah, darling. God bless you. Listen, I miss Aberdeen. I miss Aberdeen, Washington. I told my wife today, I said, do you think we could run up there and do a meeting or two? I think we're going to wait. I think we're going to wait a little bit longer, but I miss Aberdeen. I miss all y'all. That's a Georgia term. Jackie and Rick taught me. No, they didn't. But I, I'm sure that they say it all the time. All y'all. <laughs> I miss all y'all. So I got to go. I love you. Father, I thank you for the supernatural blessing of the Lord. It's upon my brother and upon my sister. Pour out the glory to where every giant falls, to where every mountain moves. And Father, let us not join the recession. Let us join the revival tomorrow night in Jesus' name. I love you. God loves you. And I'll talk to you real soon. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. You've been listening to Pray America Live with evangelist and radio pastor David Woods. Join us online with David Woods Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope channels for a refreshing time of one-on-one -on -one prayer, testimonies, and singing. David Woods Ministries is supported by the love gifts and free will love offerings of partners just like you. You can become a radio ministry partner by going to www.monthlypartners.com.